The Wade versus Meyer trial continues. Man, it's been a while since I did a video about this trial. Not much has really happened until around now. We got a new drop of evidence that just came out. Everyone's talking about it, so naturally I guess I have to talk about it too. So of course everyone's talking about the text messages. What also came up on this evidence dump was uh, a few other things that kind of link to this. You know, we have these emails that kind of show uh, it gives you a little bit more background as to how this started and snowballed into the chaos that eventually led to them dropping the book. And I feel like these emails are pretty informative if you want some background on this case. But for right now, we can just go over the text. So we see it starts off with the Antarctic Press publisher saying that they've decided to drop the book and Mark Waite is ecstatic over this. He's so happy. You are a very good man. Text me or DM me when the statement goes up and I'll recirculate it if you like. Oh, but wait, then he realizes, eh, why don't I give it a day? That way it looks less like I'm trying to take a victory lap. <laughs> he makes himself look bad, you know, right off the bat with these text messages because it shows how happy he is that he was able to convince the publisher to drop the book. And you see it goes on and he... What's kind of weird about this is you'd think that this exchange would be done with the publisher once he says, okay, I'll drop the book. But Wade keeps on texting him, you know, kind of asking him, oh, how you holding up? Oh, I'd love to read the, the manifesto. Basically, I think the idea is Wade keeps on texting him to confirm that he's not going to, in Wade's own words, turn on him. So like the idea is, yes, he convinced him to drop the book, but he also knows that the publishers have been going through a lot of stress over this whole situation, not just from dropping the book, but from also keeping the book up and having all these different people email them that they're going to be protesting the book, boycotting it, and boycotting their entire publisher, which they really can't afford. They're, you know, a small publishing company. Mark Wade himself is one of the people who just couldn't let this thing go. He had to post about it on his own account, you know, spread the word with his own fans, oh, this publishing company is publishing a book that I don't like, and he kind of contributed to the people harassing Antarctic Press, even if it was unintentional. And it's kind of obvious through these texts that they were regretting their decision after dropping the book. So we see these uh, text messages between Wade because he knows that he's regretting the decision, so he's like, holding up, why in the world is Meyer claiming that you called him in tears? Hope you are well. And he just says, I'm not commenting anymore. I don't blame you. You haven't turned on me, I hope. That sounds so horrible. <laughs> but like I said, that's kind of the idea of why Wade keeps on texting him back, even when he's saying, I don't want to talk anymore, we're done here. Wade keeps on texting him, saying, well, you're not going to change your mind, are you? You haven't turned on me, have you? That would be very unfortunate if you turned <laughs> Okay, well, he doesn't say that exactly. I said that in tongue-in-cheek, but the lack of a reply has me nervous. When can we talk? You know, once again, he's saying, um, I'm sorry, but I want to put this thing behind me. I don't want anything I say to be misinterpreted or misconstrued. I have instructed everyone, including myself, not to comment on the situation. You know, that's fair. That's fair. He's like, I'm, I'm done with you, Wade. We dropped the book. I don't want to deal with this situation anymore. I'm stressed out. <laughs> My whole company is stressed out. I'm not commenting. But uh, Wade just, he can't let it go. So the text messages go on. Trying to get the publisher to confirm that he doesn't feel as though Wade was bullying him, bullying him into making the decision like uh, Meyer was claiming. A lot of people were kind of suspecting 
based on, you know, Wade's behavior. So he's like, I am not asking for anything but a confirmation that you and I are still good with one another, or if not, what can I do? And he actually mistook him for Ben, and he was like, uh, I'm his brother. Again, I'm sorry, but I've avoided being online and taking calls at all for the past five days. It's only been, like, five... <laughs> days. We just can't let it go, even for like five days. He couldn't like wait a month. But he also says, this has taken both a mental and physical toll on me and my family. I do not want to say or do anything at this time. I hope you can please respect that. Once again, <laughs> it seems like he's saying the same thing to Wade over and over again. If you look through these messages, he's saying, I don't want to talk. I, I didn't want to do anything. I just want to calm down. I'm stressed out. Stop contacting me. That's, that's how I'm reading this. I'm reading this as stop contacting me. And I don't, I don't know. He just keeps on going. So Wade is kind of taking like the defensive side, like what have I done to offend you? Why won't you talk to me type deal? It kind of reminds me of like a boyfriend and girlfriend kind of bickering with each other like, oh, well, why won't you talk to me? Are you mad at me? And this is kind of a, a sad statement to hear from Antarctic Press, but, you know, he's saying the reasons I don't want to talk is because I don't want to be misconstrued and I don't want any misinterpretation. Uh, he says, personally, I can say we're good in the sense that I'm not angry at anyone but myself. I blame me, myself, and I for everything, and I'm living with that now. And now I have to live with myself that I facilitated more rhetoric. Nobody has offended me, I offended myself. So once again, you hear that he regrets his decision and regrets this whole situation. Wade's still persisting, very, like, narrow-minded on this. I ha He's not being very considerate. If I'm if I'm looking at this from like a moral point of view, he's not being very considerate to the publisher's feelings here. He's more concerned about whether or not he is being shown as a bully, whether or not he is being shown in a bad light, because that would be very unfortunate for him. So he's saying, Ben, that is all I will ever ask of you, and it stays between us. Do you now think that I bullied you? So. He responds, I made my decisions based on a variety of many, many, many factors to protect me, but mostly to protect my family and employees. So obviously having to do with the harassment that they were receiving due to jawbreakers being published at their publisher. I ultimately made the decision. It was 100% my decision. I will accept the total consequence of that decision. Wade steps in and says, this big bomb, no, the consequence is now on me, not you. I wish you'd been honest with me on Friday. All of this, all of it was an effort to help you. Will you at least give me that? Because everything you are saying to me indicates that you weren't straight with me when you confirmed you didn't feel bullied by me at all and that we were good. Are you changing your story to say that I bullied you? Or were you straight with me on Friday? That's all I need to know. Then I'll leave you alone. I'll lose your number and you'll never need to hear from me again. Just tell me I didn't intentionally bully or hurt you because if I did, I need to know. That's a brutal type of response. <laughs> Needless to say, I think, is that if somebody is telling you I don't want to talk, I'm under enough stress already, we're done here, over and over again. I would say you should stop texting them, give them some space, give them some time. But instead, it sounds like Wade is bargaining with him. Like, oh, yeah, I won't text you again. Just confirm that I did not bully you intentionally or hurt you. And that might be because he was, he knew that he had a lawsuit coming his way via Meyer. So he did actually need the confirmation from the publishers that 
Wade was not pressuring them to say anything, and that he did not pressure them or contribute to them dropping the book, which, based on all the text messages before that, it definitely does sound like he did. And I feel absolutely awful for Anotic Press knowing that they had to go through this. I mean, they're stuck between two people, and both of them are telling them, make this decision, no, this, make this decision. And he goes with one of them due to fear of his own safety, his company's safety, and his family's safety, because he's been harassed, maybe not even by Mark Wade, but definitely by people who are fans of Mark Wade. And upon being called a bully, Wade feels the need to kind of defend his honor. So even though the publishers are obviously in a bad spot that they never wanted to be in, they're regretting their decisions, they feel awful about this whole situation, Wade is still over here kind of fixated on the idea, well, I'm not a bully, right? I'm not a bully, right? 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 Tell me I'm not a bully. Please. Otherwise, I'm gonna be sued for a lot of money. And especially this last robe of text messages that Wade sent, it does feel extremely pressuring. But you can also understand why Wade is doing it. You know, he wants to clear his name. And you can read all these text messages too. I'll leave the link below where you can read all the evidence. We're gonna take a look at some of the emails though, give you guys some background. So these are some of the first emails sent where they're very happy that they are publishing the Jawbreakers comic and they go to say, you don't force an agenda and we are welcome to all creators, meaning that we don't care who Richard C. Meyer is. We want to publish his work for his work. They, they're obviously very excited about publishing Jawbreakers at the beginning of this email chain. And this is kind of how it all started up. This email from Brian. I just heard Comics Pro retailers were going to boycott your book and Antarctic Press if they find out we're going to publish your book. That just shows me we're doing the right thing by standing by you. Let me know if you need anything from me today. So even after they hear news that there are people out there are going to boycott the book and boy boycott the publishing company, they're still kind of like, you know what, we're going to stand with you anyway. And that's interesting. You see, you know, Richard commenting back, where'd you hear that from? I just saw some furry tweeting and it only had six likes, meaning that he didn't think that it was a big deal when he first heard about it. And Brian replied back, I heard it from a retailer who heard it from his boss, but it might have gotten blown out of proportion. So they had not realized what was actually going down until much later. And then we get this email. And I'll, I'll read this out loud. Just caught a call from Mark Wade, of all people, looking to warn us of just how badly our association with Rich Meyer might be for us. He stressed he wasn't trying to dictate what we can or can't publish, but he felt we might be entering into this agreement without full awareness of what Rich is like. He mentioned targeted death threats, among other things. So... There's your defamation right there. <laughs> I, you know, I can't say for sure that I know everything Richard has done, but I have personally never heard him make targeted death threats. So even then, it kind of sounds like he's not really taking this seriously. And he writes again, I still plan to ignore the two initial complaints I've received. I have decided radio silence on jawbreakers. Essentially, ignore any inquiry or email or discussion with anyone. If you get a question, tweet, Facebook post, or call about it, just say, we publish lots of books, and I don't have any info on the book at this time. If you have any questions about the book, the creator told us, you can contact him and he will answer your questions. Set up, deflect any... So you see a huge change in tone from, oh yeah, just ignore him, there's just a few people on Facebook, I'm pretty sure it's being blown out of proportion. And now he's like, making a whole statement about it, he's like, okay, Radio silence on jawbreakers. Nobody talk about jawbreakers. Ignore all the harassment. We can get through this. It, it, it almost sounds like he's giving them, like, team effort, guys. We can do this. Like, they're going in the front lines of the war. So basically, they were saying, okay, well, we can just forward everyone 
to Richard and we, we won't have to worry about that ourselves because we can't speak for Richard and that's fair and then they start talking about you know the private video that he made where you know the dark roast other rumors spreading about him that they can't really prove are true or not and it looks like they kind of mix, mis messed up their text as they because it gets smaller as you go down um i guess they did it when they quoted wherever this quote came from because you know when you copy and paste a quote into an email sometimes it will be the same text format as the original quote so i think that's what they did and that's why the text gets but you know they had to get the quote from somewhere where did they get it from i don't know everything but that's a crazy quote so that's a picture of email he got here and he's saying certainly none of that appears flattering but neither does it prove how much of that is true or explain why any of it might have happened also i'm not sure if the fact that it came from richard myers is about a richard myers due to odd coincidence or a name spoof or what so he posted an image here but i can't really see it but another retailer posted on twitter yesterday that if he finds out the publisher of jawbreakers he will have to consider a boycott so now more news is breaking out into the public and they're learning it's not just rumors it's very serious richard reached out to one of the real tailors to inform him of what's going on he promised to not rat them out so that real retailer <laughs> informed richard Richard posted on YouTube that retailers are colluding with each other to boycott the unannounced publisher. So the retailers have been trying to figure out it's us. So the background on that, in this email, there will be a lot more. Ignore them. A few retailers got together in secret Facebook group to boycott whatever publisher picked up Jawbreakers. But the fans are hearing this and they will boycott the stores and order it directly from us or from other retailers who support their choices. Fans are going to start buying stuff off the site, so you might see an uptick in online sales. The last email we got here is uh, Megan Keelar. Is that how you pronounce it? Based on the harassment online by Diversity Comics, I have decided to boycott your company if you choose to publish Jawbreakers. I am responsible for the diamond order at my retail location, and we will no longer... What is with everyone and you don't spell check your emails long fur come on <laughs> be ordering from a company that supports online harassment and threats and even then they were still sticking with their decision even then they were still like okay well maybe we can just contact the fans directly and they can order it directly through us maybe we don't need to have it stocked in retails oh my bad that is actually not the last email the last one is from Dunn here and this is kind of a rant <laughs> basically this is just an email of him voicing his uh, frustration with this boycott and he kept on believing that uh, this was going to blow over but people were starting to lose faith in that and believing that it, it was never going to blow over and they were never going to be able to recover from this. So you see that their hands are, are basically forced to drop the book. And all this was, for the most part, happening around the same time. Most of these emails are all in May when all this chaos was really breaking out. But uh, I'll leave a link where you can read all these emails, all the texts, get the full context of everything, you know, just don't take my word for it. You can go out and do your own research. Obviously, none of this evidence makes Mark Wade look good, uh, especially those last few texts where he's basically, you know, threatening to harass the guy until he says, no, you didn't bully me. And it's also interesting that, you know, Antarctic, the Antarctic Press publishers also don't say no, you didn't bully me. They just kind of say, it's my own responsibility. I'll take responsibility for everything. I just, I don't want to talk right now. We're fine. I'm not mad at you. But he never actually says what Mark Wade wants him to say, which is, you did not bully me. And if Mark Wade did, in fact, bully him into submission, that's a, that's a pretty blunt interference right there. So this lawsuit is crazy. You would never think 
that a comic book would cause so much trouble. Uh, especially, it's an apolitical comic book. But for some reason, people just linked it to politics, said, oh, it's a Nazi book, and then decided to boycott it. So what do you think about this case? What do you think about this new evidence that just pfft, dropped on us? Leave your thoughts down below in the comments. As usual, thank you for watching, and I'll see you guys next time. Program restart.